Wednesday morning, an earthquake struck Haiti. A group of men come in from the field, but there's little to reap. The ground is parched. The mountains are limestone. And even the wild donkeys outside weren't staying too long. The Trinidad and Tobago group boarded the bus for the drive into Port-au-Prince for what was to be the beginning of a testing day. For the most part, things looked normal, life continuing as usual, but at gas stations, security was paramount, guards carrying shotguns. Air water seemed easily available, much in contrast to the horror stories I'd heard about before going to Haiti. Juice vendors were also operating freely. People seemed, for the most part, relaxed. Thumbs up. And trade was as normal as any other day. Not all of the city was in ruins. At a church on the border of the city, the Trinidad and Tobago team set up a clinic. They found a number of people already waiting for them. They've lived here in the churchyard since the earthquake struck. I learned that among them were some who had homes still standing, but fear had gripped them immensely. Everyone passed all the night on the street, okay? You take you, you don't want you you can't take chance to live in house because you don't want you don't you don't know what happened what will what will happen in during the night. The Haitians from the church here were willing to help, but they too say they were overwhelmed. No, we we just here to to help to help to help to serve them to to do what what we can do our best, you know. But we cannot do anything for them. There are too many. Okay, there are too many. We can't do anything for them. We are in the same position. Me too, I, I, I'm in the same position with them. Okay, I can't do anything for them. Among the survivors, the story is the same. No food, no water, nowhere to live. She's looking for some help by now because she doesn't have no place to live. The house is broken. That's that's why that's the reason why she be here for. I have no place to live. She live in the street. What about food? How do you get food? She doesn't have no food to eat. She live in the street. She doesn't have no money. No food, nothing. Volunteers of the Global Aid Network of Texas, USA, were among the TNT volunteers. Our particular organization is uh, first and foremost a logistics organization, and we deal with, uh, we collect aid from a number of organizations in the United States as well as money, and then we uh, make sure they get shipped into country and uh, get cleared in and then get distributed to places like this church or the pastors here or some of the other things in the ministry we're involved with is Campus Crusade for Christ. It's, and we have a, a number of churches we support uh, in the area. The TNT team set up the clinic inside of the church, and as the word got out, more and more people began to come. With even Caricom having been turned back when it attempted to land a fact-finding mission in Haiti, a local group had managed to begin tangible humanitarian work without any administrative hassles, work meant to save lives and help the needy and the poor. But before long, a tremor, and many scampered out of the church. This one measured 4.0 on the Richter scale, but in Haiti at this time, every time the ground moves, no one's taking any chances. 
the trouble of losing their husbands, wives, mothers, fathers, sons, daughters, brothers and sisters still alive in their minds. Nine days later, their faith keeps them together. I'd left the group and hired an interpreter and a driver bound for the heart of the city to see the disaster firsthand. This is a displacement camp where dozens of thousands of Haitians now call home. They survived the earthquake but are now homeless. Along the roads, I spot more and more devastation. An entire housing complex was here. Over 20 people died in 60 seconds of shaking. And as we drove some more, the moment of horror of what millions of Haitians had faced, frozen in time and rubble. From time to time, a water truck would pass through, and with buckets in hand, they crowd around it. An entire group of buildings existed here. When they crashed down, more than 30 people were inside them. Only three survived. This is a main Catholic church in the center of Port-au-Prince. At 4.53 in the afternoon, over a dozen word prayer, the last things they would have seen were symbols of the eternal God. Monsignor Joseph Serge Biar, the Archbishop of Port-au-Prince, was killed here. He was 63. Missionaries at the Archdiocese found his body crushed by rubble in the ruins of his office. The scale of the damage at an adjacent street. There would have been panic after the initial few seconds, many who ran into the streets, killed by falling debris. No one knew if the driver of this vehicle was at his wheel. He couldn't have stood much of a chance. There's a hospital right next to the church, and here the overwhelming task facing medical personnel is apparent. 
With no more room inside, this is Miss Ten to the patients outside on the ground under tents to shade the sun. They wait patiently. Some have already been treated, but further attention is needed. There are children among them. The medical crew here were not Haitian, part of the international missions that flew into Haiti. One by one, the patients are called to the doctors. They must wait several hours in some cases. I looked on as nurses treated a female patient. She lay motionless for most of the time, but she's alive and on her way to recovery. I was on my way again towards the presidential palace. It was hard to imagine what the final moments of those who died in these buildings would have been. It came suddenly. It came violently. It left with a death toll some put at close to 200,000. There comes a time when we heed a certain call, when the world must come together as one. There are people dying Oh, when it's time to lend a hand to life The greatest gift of all We can't go on Pretending day by day That someone somewhere will soon make a change The Hall of Justice it had some 200 people inside of it when the earthquake struck. Their bodies are still inside. Directly opposite another camp. Day by day, they try to rebuild their lives here. This is their home. This is all they have, but some keep their personalities amid the grief. Send them your heart so they know that someone cares and their lives will be stronger and free as God has shown us. U.S. Marines are all across the town. They guard the back of the presidential palace. Haitians walk past them, but no vehicles are allowed to pass here, and they carry about their duties calmly. Just looking on, this is not a dangerous part of Port-au-Prince, and there's little that calls them into action. But a sugarcane vendor managed to break the trend. He came by with his machete and got a customer close to where the marines were stationed. He'd take another 30 seconds or so finishing his sale before calmly moving on, perhaps his way of saying, this is my land, Haiti is still my home.